Hello everyone, welcome back to AS and A Level Biology with Dr. Demi. I am Dr. Demi and in this video I want to show you how to do the T test. This is a very direct video using an example from the textbook just to show you how the T test is used to compare different data sets and to tell if they are significantly different or not. I hope you enjoy it and um, let's get into it. Now, this is the first of many statistical tests that you will do in the next couple of chapters. But I always tell students there is nothing to fear with the statistical test. What I have seen in CIE is that they usually give you the formula for the test, and in some cases they even fill some of the numbers for you. What is important for you to know as a person is to know where to pluck the values for certain things, and that is what I am going to show you for the rest of this video. The t-test is used to determine whether or not the mean values of two sets of data are significantly different from each other. In other words, when you have two sets of data, as I'll show you in our example on the next slide, you are able to check for yourself if these two data sets are different from each other significantly, and that will then tell you perhaps there is a different or there is not. And the t-value is what enables us to do this. In order for us to use the t-value, we have to calculate different parameters. This value here, which is written as x bar 1, is called the mean value for the first data set. And as you might be able to guess, then x bar 2 is the mean value for the second data set. S1 is the standard deviation for the first data set, and it is squared. S2 is the standard deviation for the second data set. N1 here is the number of um, data points that you have in a data set, and that applies to the second data set as well. In order to calculate standard deviation, you might sometimes need to use a different formula. And of course, I have not seen this in recent times, but just in case you have to, the standard deviation can be quite a tedious calculation because you have to separate the mean value from every data point in that data set. And once you have got that mean value, you have to square each of these differences and then add the sum of them together. Once you have done that, you have to divide that by the number of data sets that you have, um, data points that you have rather, and then take the square root of the value. Of course, don't stress too much. Like I said, you mostly have to do this um, with the t-value formula and not necessarily with the standard deviation formula. But just in case you find yourself having to calculate standard deviation, it is very important for you to know what the formula looks like. So let's look at an example from the textbook. And I have to say that every time we've done this example in class, we have encountered that the way it was worked out in the textbook seems to be erroneous. So we try to work it out ourselves. We get the same standard, um, standard deviation values as reported in the textbook, but something happens between the calculation of that and the T value that differs um, that makes our answer differ from what you might find in the textbook. So I'm going to show you just how we do it. I've taken the time to solve some of the um, answers already, so I'm just going to post the table. But let's look at this question here. It says that we are to look for the we are to see if the difference between two population lengths of um, two populations of corolla lengths are significantly different from each other. Now, you might look at this and say to yourself, well, I'm looking at it and it doesn't look that different. And that, that would be fine. But you can't do that in biology because you need to put evidence to every claim that you make. And so I have pasted here the formula for the t value and formula for the standard deviation. However, we are not going to go through the pain of solving for the standard deviation. I just want you to see how it is done as an example so that you're able to do it should the need arise. So first things first, I always tell students is that when you're calculating the t um, value is you first of all need to calculate the mean values for the two population sets that you have been given. So those are x bar 1 and x bar 2. In this case, x bar 1 would be population A and x bar 2 would be population B. In order to calculate the mean, you simply need to add all of these values together and then divide by the number of values you have. In other words, you add 13 plus 16 plus 15 up until the end and you divide by the number of points that exist. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And when you do that for A, you will get a value of 15.33. If you do the same thing for B, you would get a value of 17. The standard deviation is calculated by taking every individual uh, point here in the corolla length and deducting that value from the mean 
squaring that value, dividing it by the number of sample points that you've got, um, squaring that value rather, adding up all the squared values for each of these data points and dividing by the number of data points that you've got. So I'm just going to show you an example. I don't want us to spend all our time doing this because it can um, take quite a lot of time. Students in my class typically get about seven minutes to walk through um, standard deviation and t-value um, calculations from scratch. So here, the values that you have been given would be referred to as x. So an example of x here would be 13. The next x value for population A is 16. The next x value is 15. And remember, you have to do this for both population A and population B, and you have to do them separately and not mix them together. So in this case, we know already that the mean value for population A is 15.33. Now we're going to do an x minus x bar, and we're going to square it. Okay, so that's not the perfect drawing, obviously, uh, but let's look at this. So we can then say, I'm just going to use my calculator over here. We can then look at this and say, okay, x minus x bar, that's going to be 13 minus 15.33, that gives us minus 2.33. But remember, we have to square it, and when we square it, we're going to get 5.43. So over here, the value for 13 would be 5.43, and then we repeat the same for 16. And so we go to 16, and it's going to be 16 minus 15.33, which is 1.04, and if we square that, we get 1.089 or 1.09 if you're keeping. So another thing I tell students here, and this is a tip, is that if you notice in the question that the decimal places are only at two decimal places, make sure that your answer as well is rounded off to two decimal places. Don't write six decimal places in order to find the number. I find that if students do a calculation in some of these tests and they get a number that is maybe 0 0.0006, they would want to write all of that because they think writing that six right at the end is what is important. Always stick to the format that you're given in the question. If it's two decimal places, keep it to two decimal places. And if it's three, also keep it to three decimal places. And this goes on. You do this for every single number, and then you add all of these values over here in this column together and divide that by the number of data points that you have, which is 15. And after you divide, you then take the square root of the value. That is how you would get the standard deviation. So for this, because we've done this calculation so many times in the classroom, we know that the standard deviation for A is 4.24 and the standard deviation for B is 4.86. But this is where our similarity with the textbook comes to an end. We also know that we have 15 samples in each population. And now we're going to calculate the T value. So I'm just going to erase some of this um, so that we can use that space properly. All right, so here we go. To calculate the t-value, we already know what our mean values are for population 1 and population 2, which in this case are population A and B. So we simply go 15.33 minus 17. Now, this is definitely going to give us a negative value, but I just need to let you know that in the t value, that doesn't matter. You discard the negative value because it has no um, consequence on what you're trying to find anyway. And then here, we then come down and we do our square root. And we know that we're doing 4.24 squared divided by n1. n1 is 15. So in this case, I'm just going to use my calculator to calculate that. Um, 4.24 squared divided by 15, that gives us 1.19 um, over there. So this is going to be 1.19, or rather 1.2 actually, because if you round it off, you're going to get 1.20. So we can just write 1.2 zero here, or you can leave it as 1.19, it's totally up to you. Then we can come over here and then 4.86 squared divided by 15, and that's going to give us 1.57 or 1.58 if we round it off properly. So 1.58. If we add these two together, we are going to get 2.77, I'm sorry, 2.78. And so that tells us over here now, 15.33 minus 17 would give us a value of minus 
sorry, 15.33 minus 17. That gives us a value of minus 1.67. Like I said earlier, that is not important. Um, so you can just write 1.67 here. And if we take the square root of 1.20 plus 1.58, which is 2.78, we get a value of 1.67 as well. And so in this case, our T value would be 1.0. But this is not where it ends because when you've calculated the T statistic, you don't know anything still. You just have a number. It doesn't tell you if there's a difference between these two. In order to determine the difference, we bring back the P value. So always remember, and I tell students this, that when you go into the exam hall and you know that you're doing either a paper four or a paper five, please write this down on a corner of your paper, that when P is less than 0 0.05, the difference is significant. When P is greater than 0 0.05, the difference is not significant. So now we have a T value of 1.0, and obviously that's most likely because we um, approximated a lot. Uh, but it shouldn't have too much of a significance on what we are about to do. So our T is 1.0. The next thing we have to do is calculate what we call the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom simply means that we take our N value and we deduct one from it. In this case, we have two data points. So what we're going to actually do is take the degrees of freedom for one data population and the degree of freedom plus the other one and add the two together. Since they are both for, um, 15 data sets or data points rather, we will then have 14 over here plus 14 and that gives us 28. Once we have our degree of freedom and we have our T value, we can now determine if there is any significant difference between our two data points. So we have to come here and look for 28 under degrees of freedom. And you can see over there 28 is over here. So basically, our data point is somewhere here. The next thing we have to do, or something I would like for you to notice, is that these values over here that are contained in these four um, different columns are the T values. The potential T values at different degrees of freedom. We have those T values. We have ours as 1.0. We have a degree of freedom of 28. These values here at the bottom represent the P values. And always remember that the critical point for a p-value, I'm going to use a green marker to show that, is 0 0.05 over here. This means that the easiest way to read this table is to check at the degree of freedom 28, what is my p, what is the corresponding t-value for a probability of 0 0.05. And if we come here, we can see that that is 2.05. Now look at the trend of this table. If you're moving towards the right on this table, you will see that the T values are increasing. Okay, so the T values are increasing to the right and the T values are decreasing to the left because over there we have 1.7. This tells us that our T value of 1.0 would likely lie to the left of whatever it is that we have here. That then tells us as well that this T value would likely lie to the left of 0 0.05 as written here. If we look at the left of 0 0.05, 0 0.1 is greater than 0 0.05, and that tells us that it increases as we go to the left while decreasing as we go to the right. This then tells us that our p-value here would most likely be higher than 0 0.05 because our value of 1.0 would lie to the left. And that tells us that if P is greater than 0 0.05, the difference between the two data points is not significant. This is the same conclusion that was reached in the textbook, but for some reason their T value was different. And we believe that was an error that was probably made and um, there was an oversight there. If you found this confusing, um, please let me know. There's a possibility that I'll be able to do a past question on T values so that you can sort of see how it plays out in CIE. But it's a really easy, straightforward test as long as you remember the P rules. When P is less than 0 0.05, the difference is significant. When P is greater than 0 0.05, the difference is not significant. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this has been helpful to you. And I hope that you watch the next videos that follow for selection and evolution. Have a good time and good luck with the upcoming exams. Goodbye.